Chapter 9, Section 1, Introduction of CS Scripts. When the basic programming instructions are insufficient to meet the calculation requirements, the script instruction can alleviate the problem. The coding format of the script is equivalent to Python. There are many ways to use script instructions, including using a single line to make a quick calculation. Similar calculations can be done with the assignment instruction too. However, the variable being assigned to cannot follow any suffix. Things like changing the value of an element in a list variable can only be done with script instruction. The user can also use the script instruction to load or create a script file. In most cases, the script file is going to be placed before the start sequence. The functions in the script file can be called with a line script instruction at any point after it is established. This is a sample function of switching payloads during task running. When calling this function with the parameter set to zero, the payload configuration will be changed to values for gripper mode only. When calling this function with the parameter set to 1, then the payload configuration will be changed to values for holding workpieces. Remember to save the script file. In this sample, the built-in instruction function for configuring the payload is used. There are many other built-in instruction functions that can be found in the CS script manual. Users can call these functions to meet application requirements. When calling functions with a return value, users can also use assignment instructions to call them. Compared to using line scripts, users can avoid syntax errors caused by using the wrong type of equal sign. Section 2. Using Modbus on the end plate to control a gripper. The port on the end plate supports RS-485, which allows Modbus RTU communication between robot and attached end effectors. This video will use a DH-PGE gripper as an example. The first step is to configure the gripper to Modbus RTU mode. In the configuration from the robot side, configure the tool I.O. mode settings to match the gripper setting then check Modbus RTU mode. From the Modbus register address list for the DHPGE gripper, the register address is labeled as 0x0100. Writing 0xA5 to this address can initialize the gripper. From the CS script manual, when writing data to a register through tool and Modbus, the tool Modbus write registers instruction can be used. Insert a script and choose line. Type in the tool Modbus write registers instruction. The first parameter, the Modbus slave ID, is 1. The second parameter, the register address, is 0x0100. The third parameter, the data to write, is 0xA5. Run the task once, then the gripper will initialize. The concept for opening and closing the gripper will be the same. We just need to write the correct value to the correct register address. To keep things simple, writing 1000 to the position register will fully open the gripper. Writing 0 to the position register will close the gripper. We will use the same instruction. The first parameter, the slave ID, is still 1. The second parameter, the register address, is 0x0103. To open the gripper, the data is 1000. To close the gripper, the data to write is 0. If the task is not complicated, then only using these three lines of script to finish the task is completely okay. When running the task, the gripper will be initialized once before the loop starts. 
Then the robot moves to above the picking position, waits for the workpiece in position signal, then moves straight down to the picking up position and closes the gripper. After one second of waiting, the robot moves straight up to above the picking up position, then transfers the workpiece to above the placing location. It will move straight down, open the gripper, wait for one second, and then move straight up. Section 3. Functions and Task Optimization In complex tasks, a script like this might cause trouble for end users. It's difficult for people who didn't design the task to tell what this script does. Therefore, we can convert these gripper control scripts to functions to make the task more friendly to end users. Insert the script instruction before the start sequence. Choose File as the source. Create a function and name it Open. This function will write 1000 to the gripper position register. Then create a function and name it close. This function will write 0 to the gripper position register. Save the script file. Then replace the gripper control instructions with the functions we just made. Don't forget to include the parentheses. The gripper initializing instruction can be included in this file as well. During the teaching phase, the operators or engineers often wish the gripper could be opened or closed as they want at any time. There is a trick to work this out. Make a copy of the open and close function calling script at the beginning of the main task. Then put everything else under the main task into a folder. To run the task normally, just compress two gripper control scripts, then press run. To open the gripper, uncompress the gripper open script. Compress everything else under main, and also the gripper initializing script under before start sequence. Then running the task will just open the gripper. Closing the gripper can be done in a similar way. Make everything except the gripper close script compressed under main, leave the initializing script compressed, and run the task. Also, there are some DHPGE gripper registers that can be used to confirm the open closed status. Therefore, users can make two more functions to check the gripping status. Using tool Modbus read register instructions can obtain data from the Modbus slave. The gripper position data can tell user if the gripper is open or not. Save the data read to a local variable. Write a while loop and make the loop end when the gripper has reached the specified position. If the gripper hasn't reached the position, read the position data again. The result read by the instruction is a list type variable. Therefore, the current width is stored in the zeroth element of the list. Since it's possible to have a gripper fault, instead of waiting for the gripper to reach a specified position forever, adding a timeout limit is better. Import the time library first, then record the loop start time. If it is looping more than 5 seconds, use the pop-up instruction to report fault. In the main task, after the gripper open script, change the one second waiting time to the wait open script. Cycle time will be improved this way. 
To check if the gripper is holding a workpiece properly or not, read the gripper statement register. If the result is 2, it means the workpiece is properly gripped. Use a while loop to constantly check the gripper state and set the 5 seconds over time limit. Change the wait time after the gripper close instruction to wait close. The cycle time saved with this design might be less than a quarter second, but the production might run hundreds of cycles every day. Therefore, every little time saved will end up with significant production increases. Section 4. Concept of Vision Processes and Related Script Instructions there are many smart camera suppliers in the market, including MechMind, Sensopart, Hikvision, Keyance, and Cognex. Smart cameras can be divided into 2D, 2.5D, and 3D. For common pick and place applications with vision systems, the smart camera working with the robot is often mounted on a fixed bracket or mounted on the robot flange. Depending on the brand, model, and installation method, Smart cameras use different algorithms to calculate the position and posture of the workpiece. Some smart cameras require a calibration board to guide the camera and complete the configuration. Some cameras require the robot to hold them and take photos around the workpiece from different positions and angles. Some cameras only calculate the offset from new workpieces from a reference position, but some cameras can calculate the pickup position for a new workpiece directly by using data from robots or some kind of other calibration process. This video will provide concepts behind vision processing and introduce common script functions involved. Most cameras use TCP IP communication. Socket open instructions are used for building TCP IP communication. They need parameters including server IP address, port number, and name of the socket. This is an example function made around socket open instructions. It will try to build the communication with 192.168.1.230. If communication was unable to be built, then a pop-up error message will notify the user. After the communication is built, the robot needs to send certain messages to the camera to take a photo. Different cameras might require a different type of message. It could be an integer, a string, or a specific structure of data. To meet all possible requirements, the CS robot have different types of message sending instructions built in. In this example, sending the string camera to the camera controller can trigger photo taking and start the data analysis process. After data analyzing is done, we use socket read instructions to obtain the calculation results from the camera. Different cameras will store data in different data types. Data reading instructions need to be properly chosen according to the data type. Some cameras allow the user to edit the data format with commas, spaces, and parentheses, which makes the data easier to be separated and identified. This is an example of obtaining floating point type data. The camera in the example can calculate the pick position for the robot, package the photo taking process and data reading process into a function. This makes it easy to get a pickup position in the task tree. After obtaining the pickup position, make a copy of it. Adjust the height of the copy slightly to make an approaching position. Make sure to use a move L instruction to run between these two points. Some cameras only calculate the offset from a new workpiece from a reference position on the XY axis with rotation around the Z axis. In this case, users might need to use some pose calculation instructions to use the offset value to calculate the new pickup position. In common robotic calculation instructions include pose inverse instructions and pose transform instructions. Pose inverse instructions return the inverse of the pose. Pose transform converts the pose relationship. These two instructions can reorganize the pose relationship between the device and workpiece. 
the pose of the workpiece according to the camera can eventually be converted to pose data according to the robot.